Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you again. So today we will proceed, and we are going to start a new topic. For those of you who are following the book, this is chapter three of your book. Because I felt like uh, since the second chapter was is about uh, internal or microenvironment of a business, then I thought it would be much more logical to link it to chapter four of the book, which we treated last uh, week, on external environment of the, envir of the business, or micro environment of business. But before I proceed, uh, on Friday I released a new assignment, the second, uh, part A of assignment two. Is there anyone with facing any challenge regarding the second assignment? On my way to, to class, I just got a message on Facebook. Someone was, had difficulty to access the front of the document, but I managed to fix it, and I think now it should be working. Well, so today we will discuss about managing digital business infrastructure. As we have uh, done so far, we have looked at uh, digital enterprises that different organizations that are employing digital technologies in conducting their business activities and processes. We have looked at the uh, environment of digital enterprises. We have looked at companies that are trying to start uh, online business as well as comp established companies that are trying to adapt uh, digital technology. That is companies that are going through what we call digital transformation. In the introductory lecture of this class, I said in order for companies to create value, among other things, they need to have resources. You need, they need to have uh, expertise, they need to have financial resources, human capital, technology, you name it. Depending on the nature of the company or business you're running, you may require different resources for uh, conducting your business activities. Now, one of the crucial resources that all, all digital enterprises uh, need are uh, the various digital infrastructure. And this is the subject of today's lecture. When we talk about digital business infrastructure, we refer to different hardware, such as client desktop uh, computers, servers, as well as software applications, and network fa facilities that are used by companies to conduct their activities. So when we talk about managing digital business infrastructure, we are referring to man management of combination of this hardware and software network uh, facilities that enable em employees in, uh, within organizations as well as partners uh, of an organization to perform various activities that are important for value creation. Why are we concerned about digital business infrastructure? This is important not only to start up uh, companies or online startups, but also for established companies that are trying to adapt digital technology. And this is because, as I said, for these companies, this is a key resource that allows them to create value for the uh, consumers. And in many ways, digital infrastructure affects the quality of services or customer experience that a company can, can deliver in terms of uh, speed, responsiveness. It is quite uh, obvious that the more superior the technology you have, the more likely that you'll be able to provide or deliver superior experience to your consumers. And in many ways, Digital infra, uh, business infrastructure can define competitive landscape in a, in, a, in a business. So it's very important that for companies that are engaging in online business or in digital business to, uh, to pay a special attention to digital business infrastructure. As we saw last time when we were discussing business environment, that the technology is moving so fast. 
which means it's very important for business managers to keep track of what is happening uh, in the environment and respond accordingly. We spoke about uh, agility, strategic agility, ability to, to sense what is happening in the business landscape and respond uh, accordingly. A key decision that most uh, business managers are faced when it comes to digital business infrastructure is whether to manage the infrastructure in-house or outsource it. This is a pretty much similar to the question of make or buy. For some of you who have a background in supply chain management, it's an issue of ma making cost-benefit analysis to decide whether you do it yourself or you let someone else do it for you. So it's very important to make an assessment of, of the needs and potential costs and benefits before you make a decision on that. It's clearly that you need to be aware of the various problems that are likely to be accompanied with whatever choices that you are making when it, when, when it comes to whether you decide to have, to, to have uh, say, software applications inside the organization or you decide someone else to host it on your behalf and use it either on subscription basis or access it through the, the, the web or whether you use partners' uh, applications and so on. We will look at, uh, at these uh, uh, choices and how you can uh, evaluate as you are going about in making uh, your business uh, decision. There are a couple of problems that consumers or customers of online businesses experience from day to day. And since all of us are users or in one way or another are consumers or customers to many online businesses out there, I'm sure that you have encountered some problems uh, when it comes to conducting transactions with online businesses. Can someone give uh, examples of, of whatever problems that you have uh, encountered or you think uh, a customer is, is likely to encounter in their interaction with the uh, online business? Someone with a suggestion? Yeah, sure. So you, there is security uh, threat, privacy issues. These are some of the problems we are facing. But there could be more problems. What else? So here I have a list of some of the problems that are very common for uh, commonly uh, customers of online business uh, face from day-to-day -day, uh, basis. One is uh, the website communication could be too slow. The site is not viewable on a mobile device. So we, we, we talked about uh, increasing importance of uh, mobile uh, technology where consumers these days increasingly use mobile devices. But not all businesses uh, have uh, been able to optimize their websites to make it w accessible to consumers. So this is one of the challenges some businesses are facing. And sometimes the website is not available altogether. Or sometimes the website has bugs, uh, uh, side through pages, or the information, say, typed in the forms does not, is not uh, executed. Like you're trying to access a form on a, on a website, whenever you put in information that you have been requested to do, uh, to, to, to input, the form does not respond. Or sometimes you order products and they are not delivered on, on time. Emails not replied. Customer privacy is broken, uh, uh, as they say. So there are a couple of challenges that uh, customers uh, of online businesses are facing from day to day. And as a business manager, these are some of the issues that you need to, to consider and address. Because the truth is, the market space is overcrowded. There are a lot of competitors out there. Those are the kind of mistakes that can drive you out of the market if you are not careful with. So in this class, the focus will be on management decisions involved with creating an effective technology infrastructure. 
So as opposed to going into technology uh, details like how to create a website and all the technicalities that are involved, we will mostly focus on management uh, decisions that are relevant when it comes to uh, management of e effective technology uh, infrastructure. Of course, for the purpose of clarity, I will be explaining at least briefly the different technologies that we will be uh, discussing. So there are a couple of management issues that are involved when, when it comes to uh, managing digital business infrastructure. The first one is, is the question, w which access platforms sh should we support? As we say these days, uh, consumers have multiple uh, options when it comes to accessing websites and online uh, services. So one of the questions is, uh, w which platforms should we you support? And of course, you, you need to consider the different uh, devices that uh, your consumers are likely to use. And hopefully, you will respond to, the, to, the, to their needs. That means by adopting platforms that will make it easy or convenient for your consumers to access your, uh, your uh, services. Another question is uh, the setup and selection of services for new uh, digital services. Of course, there are many services that uh, you, you are likely to introduce. There are so many business options that uh, are out there, as evidenced uh, by very uh, interesting and fantastic business ideas uh, most of you are, have suggested. It's, it just shows that the opportunities are unlimited today. So this is one of the challenges that managers uh, of online or digital uh, enterprises are facing when it comes to introducing uh, new services. And it, comes, uh, it, it, it may have to do uh, with basic questions as uh, which platform uh, to, to, to use, which suppliers, whether you, you need uh, distribution agents or whether you will do it yourself, which business model uh, to, to adapt, those kind of uh, questions are some of the issues that we will uh, consider in this class. And also the issue, how do we achieve quality of service in digital uh, services? So there are a number of uh, uh, requirements that uh, you, you need to, to consider well, w when it comes to enhancing the, the, the quality of your, your services. So whatever strategy that you are adapting, yeah, you have to consider the business uh, fit, how compatible the strategy is to your, to your business. You have to consider security issues, speed, availability, and level of errors. So all this together define the, 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 the service level, the, the quality of service that uh, uh, you, you will provide to your uh, consumers. We will look at all these things uh, separately. And also, you have a, a question, where do we ask the, the applications? Uh, I, I said earlier, uh, the key question that is most managers are faced with is whether to host the, 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 the software or the infrastructure in-house or to uh, outsource. And when it, w whether you decide to outsource, who should you, uh, like, where do you, do you acquire those services? Who should provide those services uh, to mm -hmm. your organization? And uh, another question is application integration. It's very common for organization to have different functional areas. You, you have, uh, and this could be defined in terms of departments. Say you have a department that uh, deals with, say, accounting uh, function, human resource, supply chain management, and so on, production, and so on and so forth. So the question is whether you should integrate, you should have uh, infrastructure that integrates these functions or each one of these should work independently. We, we will look at uh, the question of integration uh, in this class today and see how important it is to integrate the, the different uh, processes and functions that are happening within an organization. But also the question of integration can go uh, further than the internal uh, inter integration. We, we also know um, from the introduction of this class that 
businesses have uh, partners, whether it's suppliers or distributors. So it might be an issue whether you should extend uh, your digital business in infrastructure into your partners, or you should limit them within your o organization. So we also look at, uh, at these issues in, in chapter six. And another question is how do we publish and manage content and data quality? I, I've said this uh, over and over time that content is, is, the, is the key, that whether you are able to attract traffic to your website, it depends very much on the kind of, or the quality of uh, content that you are creating uh, and uh, providing to your consumers. So this is also another question that will be addressed uh, in some later uh, lectures. And also, how do we manage employee access to the internet? This also is a critical question because sometimes employees can get distracted with uh, the, the internet. I, I remember with my previous employer, uh, uh, we were not allowed actually the access to social networking uh, sites to some department. I, I was working in the uh, auditing uh, line uh, as an auditor. So to us, social networking sites such as Facebook or Twitter were not that important or not part of our business. So the employer had completely blocked those uh, uh, services. You, you couldn't access uh, Facebook or Twitter at work. But of course, these days we, we know that there are some departments, in many ways their activities or their business is intertwined to those kind of uh, platforms. Say, ma marketing departments today use a lot of uh, services such as Facebook. So it may be necessary uh, for you to, to open up access to, uh, to, to those uh, services. So, but, but of course, it, it's a case by case issue. You need to, 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 to make assessment whether uh, you should limit uh, your employees' access to internet and why you should do so. And the last question is, how do we secure data? We talked about uh, security issues, and this is of paramount importance when it comes to online uh, businesses. We, we know that consumers are so much worried about safety of their uh, data. So it's uh, an important uh, question that we need to address. This will be addressed in chapter 11. So back to today's class, we will now start looking at how we can support the growing range of digital business technology platforms. As I said, consumers have different uh, options today, and we need to consider all these platforms that are available at our disposal and see how you can optimize on these uh, uh, opportunities that uh, the, the internet and digital technologies together have uh, brought to, 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 to the business uh, uh, environment. So traditionally, desktop computers have been dominant. Uh, that has been uh, the main way you could, companies uh, could get access to, to could they access or interact with uh, uh, consumers. So desktop sof software and browsers were typical ways through which consumers can access uh, the, 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 the internet and thereby provide opportunity for companies to, to interact with these uh, uh, consumers. However, uh, as I said, mobile uh, technology has become very powerful and is still uh, becoming powerful and this provides a range of uh, platforms uh, through which companies can uh, interact with uh, their consumers. Uh, you can remember this uh, chat uh, I had um, in the second or third lecture, and that was a quote from uh, Mary Maker who predicted in 2008 that uh, at, at some point mobile uh, will overtake fixed internet access by 2014. What do you think? Was she right? Was she right? Yeah. She was right. In, in 2014, there were so many reports testifying to what uh, she said. The majority of digital media consumption now takes place in mobile apps. Mobile overtakes de desktops, laptops as online shopping device of choice. So today we cannot argue anymore 
on the importance of mobile technology because that is the, the reality. It's true that mobile technology has become powerful and is overtaking the desktop uh, computers. But still, desktop computers are important. Even now, we, they are still used. If you look at the statistics, most of them suggest that in terms of uh, usage, mobile technology is about 51% and desktop is 49%. So it's more or less the same. But at, but at least there are so many. Uh, w we see the prospect of uh, mobile technology becoming even more uh, powerful in the long run. So we will look at both different pl uh, platforms that can be uh, accessed through desktop, laptop, and notebook platforms. And later, we will look at uh, m mobile uh, platforms. So there are a range of uh, software that can be accessed through desktop, laptop, and notebook. And here are five of them that uh, we'll quickly uh, go through. Desktop browser-based platform. Of course, basically, we are referring to different uh, browsers that uh, consumers can use to access uh, uh, the internet. So it's an important channel through which the compu uh, consumers access uh, our uh, web services. And it's important for managers to, 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 to know uh, different uh, uh, browsers that are available there and the relative importance of this uh, uh, browser. Because sometimes the kind of platforms that we support may not be compatible to certain browsers. So you need to be aware of the different browsers that your consumers uh, are using and make your, your platform accessible conveniently accessible to, to those consumers. Today, with technology, you, you can track actually even what kind of browsers your consumers or people that are visiting your site use, which means that provides you an, op an opportunity to, to optimize the, the, the platform that you are supporting. Desktop apps, these are not so popular, but of course, we know this is one of the uh, opportunities that uh, business enterprises can, can, can use. We know uh, Apple desktop has a number of uh, uh, apps uh, that uh, consumers are using. And it's an opportunity for managers of uh, online businesses or digital enterprises to integrate and access uh, interaction with uh, consumers through these uh, apps. We know mobile apps are much more popular, but we need to be to keep our eyes uh, open of the possibilities also provided by desktop apps. Email platforms, of course, let's say email uh, platforms are not that uh, platform, but uh, we know that uh, email has been traditionally. Uh, used as an important uh, communication channel for, for marketing. And it's an important uh, uh, channel for, for maintaining contact, for interacting with uh, c consumers. And it's still used even today. Of course, you need to take precaution wh when it comes to interacting with consumers through email. We, 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 we saw la last week that there are laws and regulations that uh, guide those kind of uh, activities. And in, in Norway, they have a, a, a law. Uh, Mark is following a law, is something like that. And I believe in many countries also, they have uh, laws uh, guiding uh, companies' interaction with consumers or prospects through uh, emails. But it's still an important channel that you can consider for interacting with your consumers. And then we have uh, feed base and API. Uh, API is an uh, application programming interface. Uh, I will have a detailed discussion about this uh, later, given the increasing importance of uh, APIs in, in today's uh, business environment. So I, I will treat it a little bit in detail more uh, later and show different companies that are taking advantage of these technology uh, uh, or, or platforms right now. So. There are so many uh, consumers that still access data through RSS and rich sites summary feeds. Uh, th this is what uh, when you 
subscribe to certain websites and they ask you uh, to check in uh, an option for receiving updates uh, uh, on whatever new content that is posted on, on, on the site. And it's uh, a powerful way of uh, engaging and interacting with your consumers in terms of giving them uh, updates on what is happening uh, with your business, whether it's uh, new products, uh, new services, or n any news or any stories about your, uh, your brand. It's a very powerful way of uh, keeping your customers up to date. Video marketing uh, platforms, this is another uh, channel that is increasingly becoming uh, important, especially with the rising importance of uh, smart televisions. So all the uh, uh, television channels that are de delivered through the, 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 the internet, with the, the, which are, they are known as IP television, the Internet Protocol Television. They're all related to this uh, video marketing uh, platforms. So there are so many ways of interacting with uh, uh, consumers uh, today. And this is one of the channels that uh, you can consider uh, using. And now we'll look at uh, mobile phone and tablet pl platforms. So as uh, I've said that in, in many ways, uh, mobile devices has changed the, the, the way we consume content, the way we interact with customer, uh, with uh, brands, and the way custom, uh, companies interact with us uh, consumers. And in many ways, when it comes to choice of uh, software and hardware platforms, mobile devices are very similar to, to the uh, desktop. They, in order to access the internet, they also need uh, browsers. Of course, uh, apps are more dominant when it comes to uh, mobile technology. But of course, given th their mobility, that the, the possibility of using these devices at different locations, they, are, they have become much more important and they are providing even greater opportunities for companies to engage with uh, customers. So uh, uh, of the platforms that you need to, to, to consider when it comes to mobile devices, uh, first is the mobile operating system and uh, the browser. So we have to be aware, of course, we, we are aware that the different mobile uh, devices are associated with different operating system. And, and in many ways, these operating systems are integrated with browsers, and I will, we will see in the next slide, they are also integrated with different apps. So which kind of, platf uh, which kind of platforms are you planning to uh, support among these uh, operating systems is very important. And it has to do with the popularity of the operating system. Today, we know Android is leading in terms of uh, number uh, uh, of users. Uh, you have, uh, uh, given it's uh, free for uh, companies, uh, mobile phone ma manufacturers to, to use it, you have more people that are using Android. But you cannot underestimate the importance of, uh, of iOS. Of actually, it's uh, next to, to Android. And you have a, a huge uh, number of people that are using iOS uh, as well. RIM, Research in, in Motion, BlackBerry. Back in the days, early 2000, it, it used to be popular. And then it underestimated the, 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 the power of Android and iOS around 2006 when uh, Apple brought in the, the, the iPhone. There are a lot of, uh, as I said last week, there, there were a lot of uh, uh, mistakes, RM, uh, research in motion that the, the, the manufacturers of BlackBerry made strategic mistakes that they made when, when it came to assessment of the new uh, competitors, and in this case, it Android and uh, iOS. Today, it's, uh, it's not that popular. Of course, they have got a new CEO that is trying to change uh, the course of the company, but still, it, it has a long way to, to go. So you have to consider the, the relative importance and popularity of this operating system and see how you can support or you can build your platforms around this op operating system to allow convenient 
access of your uh, of consumers to your to, to your services. And then we have uh, the, 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 the apps that, that are very much connected to the operating system, uh, as I say. And the most important decision is to decide whether to deliver content and experience through a browser or a specific app which provides an improved uh, experience. So it is possible for consumers to access your services through browsers, but also we, we see an increasing trend of companies creating apps that, that is make it much more, uh, to make it convenient for consumers to, to access your services. But of course, you need to make assessment depending on the, uh, your, your, your business. Uh, we say one size does not necessarily fit all, whether this is important and will have significant impact on your business, it depends on your situation. But you need to make assessment whether there is a business case for developing an app or you should let your, your, your customers access your sav online services through uh, the, the, the browser. I remember uh, last year we, we, we had a seminar on service innovation and we were divided into groups. And in that seminar we were required to develop a new service for an hospital. Amazingly, we, we didn't communicate. Different groups worked uh, independently. But at least each one of the group included an app as one of the solutions that they would suggest when it comes to uh, improving uh, healthcare services. That uh, someone would suggest, say, hospitals should have a, a, an app that people can download. And whenever you have a, a trouble, you can just get into the app and access your health, inf health information. And the doctor will be informed. Uh, in real time. Of course, some of the ideas were quite uh, unimaginable, but it was very interesting to see that even if we were working in separate rooms, each one of us came up with more or less the same, at least suggested an app was one of the viable way to, to improve uh, service. So it's becoming popular, but still, uh, as I said, you, need, you, you don't have to, to do it just because other people are doing you have to assess whether this is relevant for your, for your business. There are a number of challenges of creating mobile platforms. So we have looked at uh, all these uh, platforms, whether it's desktop uh, supported or mobile devices supported. But there are key five challenges that uh, you need to, 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 to address uh, as, a, as a business ma uh, manager when it comes to developing these uh, mobile platforms. And the, f the first challenge is whether you should have one site or two. So the issue is whether should you have a standardized uh, one site that can be accessible by all dif uh, different uh, devices that your consumers use, or you should have separate sites. But of course, you need to remember when you maintain two di separate sites, then you have the challenge of updating this, uh, it's time consuming when it comes to updating the content on, on this uh, separate uh, size. So they suggest you should maintain one site and optimize it for mobile uh, de de devices. And then the second question is the right content. So it's quite challenging wh when it comes uh, to, to deciding which content you should have for uh, people that are using uh, mobile devices and those that are ac accessing your services through desktop. And you need to create the right uh, content for the mobile users. And those are some of the uh, services that, based on, uh, uh, on data that have been collected so far, they appear to be mostly used by mobile device users. So services su such as maps, inform quick information, shopping, social networking, those are the kind of uh, things that um, people uh, regularly uh, use. We, we, we know that there is a, a, a tendency of uh, showrooming. Uh, it's called showrooming, that people these days go to physical stores. And as they are browsing the physical store, they also compare, say, prices, features with uh, similar products on online stores. 
So if, if you are able to provide uh, easy access to, to, uh, to those kind of services, then you have a, a plus um, when it comes to uh, creating and managing mobile uh, platforms. So it's very important that you deliver the right content for, uh, for users of mobile uh, devices. And then you have uh, an issue of user experience. It's quite challenging because smartphones, let's say mobile devices, relatively have smaller uh, screens compared to, 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 to desktop. And a lot of mobile, uh, mobile phones today, they, have, do not, they do not have a physical uh, uh, keyboard. And that can make uh, browsing experience a bit different from uh, desktop. So you, you need to create your, your, your website in a way that uh, can uh, maximize uh, user experience. And they suggest uh, you make it possible for, uh, for, for users to browse your website vertically. And that is much, much easier because that's what most of the uh, consumers are doing. So you have to think of the user experience and put yourself in the shoes of the of the user and see how convenient your sites or your services are. And then you have another question of personalization. That is how relevant the content is to the, to the specific consumers or to the audience that uh, you, are, you, are, you are trying to, to, to approach. And it's very important because personalization is very much uh, linked to the repeat visits to your, to, to your site, the amount of uh, time that people spend on your website, and the number of views uh, generally. So the more personal, uh, the, the more relevant the, the content is to, to, to your audience, and it's more likely that you will receive more views, you customer, consumers will spend more time uh, on your site, and they are likely to return uh, on, the, on your, your, your site. And this is intertwined to income derived from advertising. The, the, the more views you have, the more traffic you are able to, to attract, this can result into increased uh, uh, re revenue. I, I, I was reading on, uh, on a newspaper last week, it was on uh, Dag and Snodding's Sliver, I, I believe, and they were, they, they gave an, uh, it was a, a young lady that has a, a blog, and they say it costs around 50,000 Norwegian crowns to 80,000 Norwegian crowns for a business to post something related to their brand on that website. And of course, that money is not, uh, not every blogger receives uh, that amount, uh, kind of payment. It's because of the popularity of their size. So they say it is um, most of the top uh, blogs in, in Norway receive that amount uh, of money because companies be believe by exposing their messages on those blogs, they are able to reach larger audience. So this uh, it is connected to this because the more you can make the content relevant to your audience, the more traffic you can uh, attract and retain, and the more uh, attractive your, your, your website is in case of uh, publishers. And then promotion, uh, we know the internet space now is overcrowded, everybody is there, and, and that is, uh, can easily be uh, explained because it's very easy today to start a business. So probably even as we are sitting now, someone is creating an online business, which means you need to think about the visibility of your business. You have to make sure that people can see uh, your business. So you have to take uh, necessary steps to promote yourself uh, in the internet space. We, we talked about uh, the search marketing, uh, search engine opti optimization, and those kind of tricks, which are, are, are will come back again uh, wh when we are uh, addressing chapter seven, I think, uh, when online marketing, that how you can increase uh, visibility uh, o o on the internet space and the different uh, techniques that you, you can use uh, to, to maximize uh, your, your visibility, that when consumers are looking uh, for certain products or certain brands, then you should be uh, one of those that appear uh, at the top. Yeah, okay. So, given the increasing use of mobile platforms, it's important for companies to assess whether they are gaining similar levels of business from consumers using mobile platforms as desktop platforms. So, uh, as I say, we, we, of course, we 
appreciate uh, the fact that mobile devices are increasingly becoming important, but the bo bottom line is you need to make assessment whether this is the case with your business or not. So b besides uh, desktop, laptops, uh, notebooks, and mobile devices, there are also other hardware platforms that companies ca can uh, use. And here I have uh, three of them. Uh, the first one is uh, gaming platforms. So these are include a, var a variety of gaming, uh, gaming ma machines, such as PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, and so on. So we, we know that people these days increasingly sp spend time uh, gaming. And this is an opportunity for, uh, for, for uh, online businesses or digital enterprises in general uh, to, to interact with uh, consumers in, in terms of uh, placing ads or on, on these ma uh, ma machines uh, as a way of communicating your, getting your message out. Because the thing is, it's very difficult to get attention of consumers these days. So you need uh, to place your communication uh, to those places where consumers are. And this is one of the areas that you can consider uh, getting your message out. And then we have indoor and outdoor kiosk types of, of apps. So these are computer terminals. These are large computer terminals, including uh, specialized hardware and, and software. And usually they are placed uh, in uh, public spaces and they allow uh, consumers to access uh, information, applications for communication, commerce, entertainment, and education. It's uh, one of the very powerful way of uh, interacting with consumers. And I, I have a short video that I, I can show you how companies are using this. So this is powerful. Uh, we, we, we talked uh, in the previous uh, uh, lecture about mouth screening, that people these days. Uh, we are at the uh, uh, Convention Center. Sorry. Y using traditional uh, channels like uh, television has pr proves not to be as effective as it used to be, because we have so many di distractions these days. So it's very common for people to um, mouth screen or watching television and suddenly they get back to their mobile. But w when you use technologies uh, like this, indoor and outdoor kiosk types of apps uh, or interactive kiosks, it's very easy to capture all the attention of the uh, 
consumers. So these are some of the technologies that uh, you may consider using. But of course, the principle, again, still the same, whether this is relevant for your business or not. But at least you know that there are some of the uh, ways out there that you can use to capture consumers' attention. So we will stop here, and we will continue after the break. <laughs>